Well, here we are at Victoria Park with another vintage Collingwood, all thanks to Get Wines Direct. And we're with 1990 Premiership star who played 246 games with the Magpies, Gavin Krasiska. Gav, uh, back to the old <laughs> haunt, mate. How are you, Michael? Uh, yeah, it's changed a little bit. It's in good condition, actually. It's been great. Let's go back to the beginning. When you first walked in the door, what were your first impressions at Victoria Park? Well, as a 17-year-old Queenslander playing Australian rules, it's probably pretty overwhelmed with the, the situation and, uh, I guess, the size of the football club. And I just remember it was energetic all the time. Uh, there was a lot of enthusiasm. I think that's what Lee was trying to create, was to get some pressure from underneath with young kids being involved. And, and I think that's what we did. And, the flow-on effect of, those, of giving those guys a chance and uh, being around senior players and, and playing and training at the highest level gave us a good opportunity, obviously, for the next couple of years. Kevin Francisco. Now off the field, uh, you lived at Coventry House with uh, a few of the other young guys, yeah. and your, your mum who came down with you. Yeah effectively looked after the house. Yes, it was uh, a great experience, especially that first year in the under-19s. Mum looked after us, it was a, a real uh, bonding unity type house and, you know, we had some good fun. The main thing that sort of leading into that, into 1990 was the camp we had. That really sticks in my mind is that really strong building of that team and that unity and, and I guess the work we did we did it on the camp and then getting lost and really fearing for our lives I guess to Just a certain Just talk a degree. little about that because you talk about being lost. It was a lot more serious than that. Yeah look we had a four day hike. We basically were out for two days and, and back for two and you know I think we'd walk for over two days and we just hadn't come to these river crossings where we were supposed to and we were just completely lost and in a completely different part of the the mountains and I remember the the night before we uh, started our trek back you know we had a boiled egg for dinner after walking for 12 hours up up and down these hills so it was look it got to a stage where guys were quite scared and it was uh, a really challenging time and in a strange sort of way as you said it, it really helped galvanize the group well it did it, it brought guys together and we had to support each other completely it was a, a really big team effort to do that now, March 1988, the next year, your mum passed away suddenly, mm. uh, which is obviously tragic. H yeah. How did you come through that? Oh, again, it's uh, it's a hard one looking back because on reflection, um, you know, how I dealt with it at the time probably wasn't great as a young kid, not knowing how to grieve even. Um, you know, the club did the best they could in regards to supporting me. Uh, it was basically a, a, a matter of just getting on with footy type process. You know, it was a lonely, you know, scared time for me. To be able to concentrate on footy and have that, have footy as an outlet, um, obviously helped me get through it to a degree at the time. In 1990, getting through the season and it was getting into a final series where the club again was for the third year in a row in contention. Can you, can you think about that first game, which was the drawn game in the final series against West Coast? Yeah. And if West Coast win that game, well, who knows what would have happened? Yeah, I've got a bad memory of that game, and I, I don't think Lee Matthews has ever mentioned it, but Carl Langdon was the one that got the clearance uh, on the half forward line and kicked it, and Sumich ma uh, marked it in the pocket. So thank God uh, Sumich kicked the point. Peter Sumich. It's a tie. And besides how close the draw was, obviously. Um, once we got through that, we were just never going to get beaten in any of those games over the, over the next few weeks of, the, of that final series. Well, how confident were you going into the grand final as, from an individual standpoint? There was, a, there was an inner belief, yeah, I think, in the sure. group. We, did, we just had a, had a belief that wasn't spoken about. It wasn't like we were going around training saying how good we were or we're going to win this and so forth. But there was just this, this inner strength within the group. You're a premiership centre-half forward. You never played there in your entire career except for grand final day. Mm, it's a strange <laughs> one. Um, yeah, look, I, I guess, uh, yeah, Lee just changed it around. Kick it for the first time. And caught. Ripped off the football. On the way he wanted the forward line to play was basically to get it in there and keep it in there. And with my, my tackling uh, background from rugby league and so forth, it was... Uh, uh, no problem for me to, to, to do, play that role for him and, and just put a lot of pressure on down the forward line. One hand, a clash of bodies, the ball breaks free, it's all Collingwood. Grasiska heads towards goal, the good looking kick, he's done it. 
Gavin, it's been great to relive a few old memories, mate. Uh, great to see you looking so well and great to see you. everything's back on track. So uh, thanks for your time. No problem, Sledger. <laughs> Next time you want to uncork a fine drop, make sure you head to getwinesdirect.com or go in-store to 161 Burnley Street in Richmond and take advantage of an array of great offers from Collingwood's major partner.